Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. We made it home from Sandy Cooper and we had a pretty wild week. Uh, it really was a stressful, crazy event that if you haven't followed along with the video recaps or the, the individual day recaps that I did, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a summary here and talk about some of the baits that I used to secure what ultimately was an okay tournament. I got paid, I got out of there with some okay points, but it could have been so much better. You know, it really was an event where driving home, I just was pretty frustrated with myself. Whereas at the end of day two, as soon as the, the bell ended and the day was over and I knew I was in the pay spot, I felt like I had won the event. But in hindsight, I'm pretty, pretty disappointed with myself and my overall performance. Now, having said that, I don't honestly know that I could have done that much difference. Um, so let's break it down. My practice period was okay. You know, relative to what the other guys in my house were saying and the, the handful of other guys I ran into on the water, I really felt pretty decent about what I was doing. Uh, you know, I was getting six to 10 bites a day, concentrating in one specific part of the lake and, you know, really what happened, the first, the first morning of practice, I had this wild idea that I was going to go way up the river and got up there. It was raging mud, like high water and just raging mud. And I went, this is not at all what I'm looking for. So then I came back down lake and I ended up launching in an area where, you know, I think I, I went about, I'm going to say I probably went about a half mile from the takeoff area, from the ramp that I used put the trolling motor down and I pretty much never picked it up the rest of the day. I just covered a lot of water and I got a good number of bites. You know, we had a really warm morning that day. We, you know, when I launched, I think it was 57 degrees. The water temps were in the low sixties in the area I was fishing, like right around 60 to 61 and a half degrees. And there were fish that were already up, uh, setting up in their spawning areas. Now, I don't know that they had actually spawned. I don't think they actually had spawned, but they had moved up males were getting ready and there were females staging uh in some of the deeper trees so i within about two hours that four, first morning i shook off six fish now i was throwing some moving baits and i was throwing some slow you know some some pitching baits and what i found was that i was getting bit doing both uh it really seemed like that if you could find some isolated trees the fish were generally setting up where they should be now the shallower trees that were maybe more back in a pocket. It seemed like you had smaller male fish. And if you were looking for, you know, the couple bites I had that were from trees that were kind of on the outside, you know, isolated individual trees, those were bigger quality fish. So that first morning, I ended up catching two fish. I had one that was probably five and a half to six pounds. And I had another that was probably I'm gonna say four and a half. Uh, and both those fish, I caught the six pounder. I caught on an Ozark rig, the, the four aught size with the three 16th ounce weight with a Berkeley Max Scent Creature Hog in the goat color. Uh, so I had the biggest one I caught the first day was on that. And then I shook off three or four more fish on that. And then I started trying to cover more water by throwing a bunch of different moving baits. But the one that generated bites for me on that first day was just a uh, vibrating jig. This is the Z-Man uh, jackhammer. And then I had the power stinger on the back here by Berkeley. And I had a couple more bites doing that. So, you know, that was my first day. By the end of the day, I had 10 or 12 bites. And I was like, yeah, this is feeling decent. Uh, then we got our cold front that came through. So at the end of that first day, I would say probably around one o'clock, actually, in the afternoon, temps started dropping. The rest of the next couple of days of practice going into the first day of the tournament, we had lows overnight of 20, upper 20s to low 30s. Like really, you'd wake up and the boat cover would be solid frost, uh, really very cool temps. It got harder in practice. So I tried to continue to expand in that area. Both days in practice, I got six bites. The first bite I had on the second day was on that chatterbait. The next five were on the Ozark and then all six the second day were on the Ozark. And what I had done the second or the third day, I should say, 
That third day of practice, the first three hours I cast moving baits, water temps had dropped down to 55 degrees. And I spent the whole uh, for morning casting spinner baits, chatter baits, and never had a bite. I picked up the Ozark rig, shook six fish off from uh, 1030 to noon. And then I got off the water a little bit after noon because we can only fish, uh, well, you have to be off the water by two o'clock. And I had a, a phone call meeting I had to do at one o'clock. So I got off around 1230. So I was pretty excited. I was feeling good because I knew like the, the water temps had warmed back up to upper 50, you know, like 57, 58. And I really thought those fish were starting to come in. Every one of the bites I had on the Ozark rig, I had to pop the bait. If I dragged it, would not get bit, but I would let it fall to the bottom. And then I give it a quick little wrist pop. And that's when every one of those bites came. So I thought I had figured something out. Well, again, we had another really cold day in the tournament. Uh, day one of the tournament, we get out there and I fished through all of my good stuff and I caught two shorts. Um, and I had one other bite that I missed. The two shorts I caught were on the Ozark rig. And then the one bite that I missed was on the chatter bait. And I threw them pretty evenly. I probably threw the Ozark 60% and uh, chatterbait 40%. I mixed in some spinnerbait, mixed in some bigger swim baits, um, a swim jig. Just never, never happened. And I want to sit here and say I made a bad decision, but I can't really recognize any bad decision other than the fact that those fish were not in that area. There were a couple other anglers in there. They did catch a couple of fish, but nobody, nobody had a good bag. Um, I don't know of anybody that was like in the top 25, at least there were, I think there were a couple of guys that had three fish for like eight pounds. And I, so I think I, I just never, I think I got into a bad rotation, you know, fishing behind some other guys. And I don't think those fish were there. Day two for me in the tournament, I had the decision to either go fish new water or go back to that area that I, you know, had had the bites in hoping that those fish would come up and trying to figure it out. In, in, I would think almost every other tournament, I probably would decide to go fish new water, go practice. In this case, the way Sandy Cooper lays, sets up, you can't just run around out there. You kind of pick an area and you fish that area. So my thinking was, even if I picked another area, it might take me all day to figure out where the fish are at in that area. Cause you're talking about a massive lake if you even figure it out. So I decided to go back to where I was and I started in a, you know, in a stretch I had fished the first day, but different area. And, you know, it took me an hour and a half and I caught my first bite on a chatterbait, caught that. And then I missed one shortly thereafter. And that was probably around, I'm going to say 915 ish, 930. And that was it for the first period. Second period, it took me another hour before I had another bite, it was a very small fish, like a pound and three quarters. Uh, and then it started to happen towards the end of the second period. In these same areas I fished the first day, the fish started to show up. Water temps got right back up close to 60 and the fish started showing up. It was like, I, I fished through an area, catch one or two, I go right, you know, the, and basically what happened was the first at the end of the second period, I caught a couple of fish and I missed one bite. Well, as I was working my way out of there, I decided I'd go back and fish for that fish that I missed. On the way back there, I caught one off of a tree that I had already fished. And that was like, light bulb went off, fish are starting to move in. You know, so then I worked back to where I missed that bite. Period ends. I work to that tree, don't get bit go a couple of trees past that, end up catching that that almost eight pound fish. And I just kept working around the same trees I had fished. It would take me about an hour to probably make a pass, hour and a half to make a pass back through the water I had fished. But every time I did it, I was getting more bites each pass, which tells me those fish just were, they were coming. So, you know, by the end of the day, I ended up catching 11 keepers. I had 36 some pounds jumped from zero last place. I was in last place at the end of the first period of day two. So in the last two periods, I actually jumped from last place to 18th place, got paid, got a $10,000 check, got okay points, caught a big one for the heavy hitters. Like a lot of good things happened. 
having said all that, you know, you're driving home, you're like, man, you know, I probably had the fish. I didn't have them on necessarily. I lost one. I probably had two or three other good bites. Had, if I put all those fish in the boat, I could have probably made the top 10 just on day two alone. Not to mention, had I gone out on day one and end up, you know, had I caught two or three keepers, like I would have had a shot at the 10 pounds that I needed to get into the next round. So I'm pretty disappointed because I let a bad, a terrible first day really screw up the tournament. In reality, I salvaged it. Not an easy feat to do. Made it happen. And, um, you know, it is what it is. We're getting ready to roll. Uh, you know, we've got Red Crest coming up. So feel good about that. We're going to just forget about Sandy Cooper, move on to the next one. And that's where we're going. So from a, from a fishing standpoint, you know, in practice, the main bait was definitely the Ozark rig. Like I showed you with the creature hog on it. Um, I fished this on the MHX NMB 874. It's a seven, three medium, heavy, fast action rod with an Abu Garcia Xenon X. This is their uh, 8.3 to one, I think is what it is. Where is it on here? I believe it's an 8.3. Is it 8.3 or is it an 8.0? It's the eight speed gear ratio. Uh, and then I had 15 pound, 100% Berkeley fluorocarbon on it. Just a great all around setup. That was the 3 16th ounce Ozark rig. And then day two, I, you know, I honestly feel like I could have caught those fish on day two on almost anything. Like they were aggressive. They were just moving into the area, but I ended up catching them mostly on the chatterbait because I could cover more water. You know, I felt like uh, every one of those fish, except for one bit on the first cast to that tree, didn't matter what side I was on. It just seemed, you know, and I made multiple casts to each tree, but every one was on the first cast. So that tells me those fish are active. So I wanted a fast moving bait. So I ended up going with, you know, just one of my favorites. It's the black and blue uh, jackhammer. And then I've got it paired up here with a red Berkeley power stinger. This is the half ounce size. You can see how torn up it is. Half the skirt's missing at this point. Uh, just solid teeth marks. Cause they were, there were so many of those fish that were engulfing it. Like the whole bait was down the fish's mouth. I fished this on another custom MHX blank. It's a CB907, so it's a seven and a half foot. It's a blended rod, uh, so it's got really good parabolic bend, backbone to drive the bait, the bait's hook home. Just a great setup. I was also fishing a 15 pound, 100% Berkeley fluorocarbon as well, matched up with an Abu Garcia Xenon MG LTX. This is their top of the line Xenon series. Real, I wish I had more of these. Hard to afford them. That's a $500 reel, but I absolutely love them, uh, especially for fishing around all of those cypress trees. You know, casting accuracy was extremely important. And, you know, it was a lot of skipping under trees, you know, kind of almost like I related a lot to like golf, uh, golf, where a lot of casts I was actually fading or hooking the bait through the air so that I could get it around the tree and then get my line to come under the cypress tree so I could actually bring the bait past like the, the base of the tree, which to me is a blast. Like not even catching fish. I love casting. I love skipping the baits. I love uh, casting accuracy, but to have a reel like that MG LTX is just critical to have, you know, really good casting accuracy. But that was it. I mean, that was the setup. That's what I did all the damage on. I tried a bunch of other baits never had another bite let me think i had one bite i guess in practice on a on a big six inch swim bait with a tush where i had cut the hook off so i didn't actually catch that fish i had one bite in practice on a white uh slobber knocker with a minnow colored power stinger on the back and that was it every bite i had was on those baits i mean it was a pretty Keep it simple, stupid type tournament that I just wish I had back at this point. But needless to say, it it turned out all right. We salvaged the season. We get to go on to the next one. Red Crest does not count towards our overall points. Uh, that's the championship. And then I guess the next one after that is Dale Hollow, and that's where the points will matter again. So it should it should be pretty good fishing, I think, at Lay Lake. The rest of the season, you're talking about potential to have a lot of fish catches again. 
you know, for me, the two biggest question marks I feel like were Sandy Cooper and Toledo Bend. Never been to either. Massive intimidating fisheries that are tough to get around on. We got out of them with two checks, decent points, and we'll keep rolling at this point. So thanks for all your support. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll put links to these baits in the video description if you want to check them out yourself. And uh, stay tuned. We'll have a new video coming out tomorrow for you.